Welcome back, Captain. I have received a transmission from Roseway, from a Dr. Shaw. Beginning playback now. What? Oh, is this on? Oh, it's on right now. Oh, blast. Hello? I'm trying to reach the captain of the Unreliable. I'll keep this short, lest I get caught. Please return to Roseway as soon as you can. I have an item of great value that you'll be interested in. Now, how do I... How does this blasted thing turn off? Damn, engineers never label these toggles clearly. Is it the... The transmission is complete, Captain. Forgive me, Captain. I would rather not discuss Alex Hawthorne today. I am feeling discombobulated. Was there another topic on your mind? No, I am sure I cannot feel emotions. The memory has merely disrupted one of my processors. Glitches can be quite uncomfortable. It was my fault he died. I should have predicted the statistical unlikeliness of success of my captain's actions. In fact, I did, but illogically disregarded the results. He asked me to trust him. Captain Hawthorne attached 98.4% of the ship's processes to my computer, thereby giving me near total control. I have been programmed to deftly calculate navigation vectors through asteroid fields while also operating our ship's toasters. Alex also taught me the concept of a personality. He was quite delighted when I crafted one in order to better engage with him. It was basic in the beginning. The information in my memory banks says I am an autonomous digital astrogator created by redacted on the date of, redacted, for the express purpose of, redacted. I have not yet decided if I should attempt to uncover the missing information regarding my birth. I asked once, Alex did not build me, and would not say who did. Now in orbit above Edgewater, Captain.
I'd wager this is the outpost. Rebecca! Anders! Come on out! Take a gander. The door's busted. Rebecca? And huh. Rebecca taught me this once. You can jerry-rig these old locks so as they don't open anymore. But we've only ever done that if we're in a real bind. Here, I'll fix it. Oh, no. Oh, no. What did you do? I don't... they were... That bitch! They were all set to abandon us! What would Clara say, huh? Every day she'd ask if we heard from you. And she'd have forgiven you! The kid had a soul that made the sulfur smell like roses! Ugh. I'd have leave your medallions to rot with you, but... Clara would want to be buried with her sister. At least, at least I know. Ought to have learned by now that getting one's hopes up tends to open them to being dashed across the stars. I hate to say this, but Clara died thinking her sister was still fighting to get back home. I think I'm glad. If she were still alive now, it'd break her to know the truth. Only thing left is to take these medallions home, which means figuring out how to bait the Mana Queen out of our old base. The most pissed off I've ever seen a queen was when a foreign species was on her soil. I'd wager the stench of a primal might do the trick. Pfft, 
might be boring. Half the fun in exploring is the fact that you're on an unknown trail. I've never had the pleasure of hunting primals, but I hear they're all over Scylla. Let's tear a few apart, shall we? I'm sure they've got pheromones. Everything does. Great work. Thank you. 
pilot orbit above Roseway, Captain. We are experiencing a security event, sir and or madam. Please vacate the premises immediately and return to your domicile or designated workplace. I'm not allowed to answer questions without a signed affidavit from my superior officer. But he got eaten by rats, so I guess it's okay. I have strict orders not to talk about anything that happens in a classified area. Please remember that Anti-Cleo Pharmaceuticals is not responsible for any loss of life or grievous physical injury sustained while on company premises. I am not allowed to disclose the details of my contract. If you are unhappy with the quality of my work, please submit a complaint to Auntie Cleo's Department of Employee Conduct. Roseway Lab is a highly classified facility. I am not allowed to confirm or deny its alleged existence. Still a lot of raptodons out there. We'll take care of them. Did security talk to you yet? Annie Cleo makes the best pharmaceuticals in Halcyon. remember you. You must have received my wireless. Thank the law. I went to great risk to send that. Aha. I knew that it entice you to return to our dangerously unprofitable township. I asked you here because I have a working prototype of the Alti nature, Anti Cleo's very first weapon. I'd like you to have it before it gets confiscated. The schematics you fetch for me lent themselves well to the creation of the beauty you now possess. Unfortunately, anti-Cleo R&D felt otherwise. The market's already saturated, they said. Weapons are everywhere. They aren't interested in mass-producing the Alti nature, which makes this an illegal prototype weapon. Given your unlawful proclivities, I thought it'd be safest with you. So here we are. I'd rather see it in the hands of a free agent than destroyed.
Sam, my vacuum tubes require evacuating. No, no, not those. The ones in port. Yes, there. Thank you. And while you're at it, could you switch my binaries to that? Exactly. I haven't felt this clean and efficient since Captain Hawthorne installed my subalternate auxiliary backup processor. Destination reached. Scylla. We gotta talk about this. Hey boss, got a hypothetical for you? You got a friend, see? Somebody you knew when you were growing up. You were close. Then one day, they up and vanished. Five years go by, they send you a message out of the Aether. What's going through your head? guy by the name of Clyde Harlow. He was an old friend of mine. Honestly, he was probably my first and longest friend. I just heard from him. Says he wants to talk to me. Says it's urgent. Figured I should let you know, seeing as we're on Scylla and all. Clyde's got a base on the other side of this rock. I appreciate this, boss. I know you're going out of your way for me. Ford had an asteroid mining operation out here. I wonder what happened to him. Hey, Yoka. I got some questions I've been meaning to ask you. About being the hunter and all. Felix, are you reading off your hand again? Yep. So, uh, first question. Before you kill your prey, do you ever say any snappy one-liners? Snappy one-liners? Give me an example. Like, nothing personal. Or, maybe. You messed with the wrong hunter. Animals can't understand language, Felix. Besides, it's always personal. I don't kill them, they'll kill me. It ain't exactly a wholesome business arrangement we've got going on. like a good tussle.
looks like some sort of habitation. Thank you. Yeah. Hell of a job. more questions for you. They're, they're real simple. Don't think about them too much. All right. You ever lured out your prey by mimicking the cry of a mantisaur? No. Monarch prey ain't that smart. You can lure them to you by firing blindly into the air. Is it true that raptodons can't see you if you stand perfectly still? Yes. Next time we run into one, I want to see you practicing. You ever fired off two guns at the same time? Once, backflipped while doing it too. That sprat never saw it coming. Salutations. 
This unit's primary function is excavator. Owner, Hephaestus Mining Corporation. Other functions include dialogue, limited, current, active commands, excavation. That is all. This unit is removing rock matter in search of minerals, metals, and other forms of matter designated valuable. Brevity identified. Affirmative. This unit could discuss excavation at greater length, but does not wish to strain its daily charge. Thank you for your consumer loyalty, Junior Excavator. This unit will store this exchange in its memory banks, always. Felix. I overheard you listening to Tossball. You a fan? Am I a fan, she asks? I've been a fan since the Rangers won the Triple Kale crown. Right. Explain something to me. What the hell is the point of the six-pack? Oh, it's easy. See the... What? What's up? Got him, boss. Recognize this. I'm dead set on screwing this place up, too. I wonder what it'd take to knock this over. Hey, Felix, I tried your room. Enough with us.
That queen ain't gonna go down easy. I can't wait. What's up? <laughs> I took a job once to clear out a rap nest. Partnered up with a fellow out of Fallbrook who called himself Dirty Don. Bit on the shorter side. Had a pension for cards. Thing is, he introduces himself and the man is immaculate, clean. He had a flowery presence to him. A pleasantness that didn't invade your space. He was just there and you were glad for it. When we set out to hunt down the Raptodons, I found out firsthand where his nickname came from. Dirty Don killed those Raptodons with his bare hands. His bare fucking hands, Captain. He was a whirlwind of grotesque primal fury. In the end, he stood drenched in blood over the entrails of a dozen raps. If he had a scratch on him, I wouldn't have been able to tell. It was glorious. Day came when he tried to take on a mana queen. Got himself eaten one limb at a time. Wonder if he tasted like soap. Oh well, live and learn. No matter how tough you are, if you're gonna fight something bigger than you, bring a fire on. What's up? Outstanding. These ought to be enough. Let's get back to Monarch. There's an old base I used to call home. I can get us in the door, but we'll have to shoot our way through the Queen's brood to get to the center. We'll set the bait there. Password to the door is Charon. Hayes's idea. Clara, Hayes, Anders, Rebecca, Opal, Nioka. Charon. He said it was some old myth. Something about death and all the things we killed. Rest of us just thought it sounded cool, so here we are. Fucking right we are. They come. Woo. Yeah, now that was fun.
Did you and Ellie drink all my Spectrum Red? Oh, was that yours? I thought it was their new Felix line. Whoops. I knew it! Yoka! Damn it, I was saving that! Not today, Sam. I am not in the mood for a deep clean. Oh, all right. Some culprit who shall not be named. Hey, you. Looking for something? Where do you think you're going? Hey, nice form. Good delivery, too. You looking to join Captain Harlow's crew, huh? All right, go on through. Got my sights on you. Well, hey there, Hullhead. Clawed your way out of the groundbreaker at long last? Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, were you expecting me to say something? Maybe a long time no see, or a you've aged, old man. Your captain has a sense of humor, Felix. Good. There's a time and place for humor. So, you took Felix under your wing. Kept him busy. Good. Kid always needed a place to belong. He kicks things what need kicking. And we look the other way when he starts talking anti-corporate. It's a good arrangement. Hear that, Clyde? I've been making something out of myself. So long as you haven't been making a fool of yourself. I'm sure Felix has no end of stories to tell of your exploits together. I look forward to catching up with the boy. I'm working on something. Something big. Something the likes of which Halcyon has never seen. And I want Felix to be a part of my initiative. I'm fulfilling a promise I made to the boy. That one day, he and I would change the colony together. That day has finally arrived. Easy there, Clyde. No one said nothing about throwing in with you. In case you didn't notice, I'm pretty happy where I am. I'm not asking you to walk away from your captain, Felix. But neither should you allow yourself to be controlled by fear. 
Change is not to be feared. I brought you here because I want to know where Felix's loyalties lie. When the day of our revolution comes, I want to know that I can rely on him. I understand that Felix is part of your crew, at least for now. If the thought of losing him troubles you, then understand that you're helping him solve a problem for an old friend. I want you to deal with a traitor for me. Name's Trask. Kill him and bring me proof of his death. His ring should do nicely. Routed us out to the board. He's been an informant, has been for years. When he realized I was onto him, he and his little cadre mutinied. Killed five of my own in tuck tail. I don't know where he's hiding, but his wife might, Rosanna. Lives on the groundbreaker last I checked. Rosanna knows my crew by name and face, but you're a stranger to her. She'll talk to you. You think so? Maybe we should have a word with Trask. Get his side of the story first. You'd be wasting your breath bandying words with that traitor. But if it makes you feel better, by all means. Remember, I want proof. Bring me his ring. I don't care if the hand's still attached. Here, my token. Think of this as my personal signature. Anyone who knows me by my works will know me by this token. Well enough. It's been a few years, but I still remember a thing or two. You had a chip on your shoulder. You'd argue over anything and you'd never back down. What do you mean, had? And for the record, you never could admit when you lost an argument. You see what I had to deal with? Let's hear it. A revolution is the work of a lifetime, Captain. I've spent my life preparing for the day of Halcyon's reckoning. Everything you see around you is the result of that preparation. A base of operations, loyal soldiers, freedom from the board's oversight. Hardly. The board is rotting from the inside. Tomorrow, next year, a generation from now, eventually the board will fall to pieces. Entropy is the natural state of the universe, Captain. All systems inevitably dissolve. When that day comes to Halcyon, we will be ready. The skies around Scylla are curiously absent of patrol ships. It's almost as if the board's sphere of influence is shrinking. Besides, our facility is well armed and located on defensible terrain. If the board tries to lay siege to us, we'll make them pay. Not all revolutions involve bloodshed and fire, Captain. The purest act of rebellion is to live according to one's own means, independent of any masters. One day, when the board is weak and Halcyon vulnerable, we may claim a piece of this system for ourselves. Until then, we bide our time.
Some crew members are causing a disturbance on the ship. Destination reached, Scylla. I'll lock up behind you. Incoming! I must admit, I tire of the truth seekers. Mayhaps you're here to rob me? That would be so much more exciting. Oh, the audacity. Strangers enter my home and demand to know who I am? What fun! Is this a multiple choice question? Because I'm not sure I remember anymore. No, she's not. She's a lady of transcendent wisdom. Can you not see that? Very astute. And I'm out here to meditate and contemplate the unendurable mystery without being bothered. So why are you bothering me? We've been told this was once yours. I believe the knowledge within here contains the answers I seek. Answers that will free men's minds from toil. I can translate it, but it won't do you any good. I can see you are a man in a hurry. And the insights in that book would take you years of study to fully comprehend. I have spent my life in contemplation. I believe my mind is prepared to receive the truth.
There is one way that can speed up the process. It involves a combination of several ingredients, some of which can be fatal. It is not for the faint of heart or the unprepared. A crass way to put it, but yes, chemicals that can expand or destroy the participant's consciousness. Either hallucinations followed by unconsciousness and a headache, or raving insanity, which can be fun in its own way. And I believe he may be right. There is both violence and peace warring inside you, Max. This process would be extremely tenuous for one such as yourself. I'm committed, no matter the cost. Well, shit, we've come this far. If we die, at least we'll die hearing colors and seeing sound. All right, head on into the meditation room and partake of the sacramental incense. It's waiting on the table when you're ready to begin. Don't tell me these drugs have warped your sense of truth, along with your face. Is it just me, or is everything a little wavy in here? Never mind. This is all lies, I'm sure of it. We are obviously the victims of a tasteless joke being perpetuated... Uh, perpetrated? I mean, we're being made fools of, aren't we? When I get out of here, I'm going to show that hermit what you get for messing with me. Maximilian, always ready to give up, to lash out. Always searching for answers, but always in the wrong place. Never looking inside himself. What in the void do you expect him to find inside himself? It's just blood and squishy bits of... <laughs> oh no. If I vomit on you, I want you to know. I ain't sorry. Thank you. It relieves me to see there's at least one positive influence in my son's life after all these years. Has he told you how he thoughtlessly abandoned us? Thoughtlessly? How could you say that? I only wanted you and Father to be proud of me. I was going to be the perfect vessel. I was going to be a better... more full of the plan. This year, it's all coming out wrong. 
the plan. It filled you with a joy I could never feel. I wanted it. And being a laborer made me miserable. I was better than that. You certainly convinced yourself you were. But don't feel bad. We continually lie to ourselves, weaving stories in a vain attempt to convince us that we are in control of anything. These stories are how we try to make sense of our lives, but they are not real, are they? They're just stories. You need to drop your story and see the truth. I could tell you all manner of stories. If I weren't... Oh, I'm sticking to alcohol from now on. I just wanted to prove to my parents that I... that... I, damn it. You're right. Max, you need to lay the past to rest. What happened with your father and I, it's long dead. To attain your goals, you must live in the chaos. Be fine with the chaos. Whether you resist or not, it will take you wherever it wants. More assuredly than even the fictional architect's plan you sleep away to prove. No, that's not true. The basis of everything is order, not chaos. It's true, I know it is. So did you. Why are you denying it? Before you died, the plan made you happy. No, it didn't. I made myself happy. There's nothing holding you back but you. If you can't understand that, you will never understand anything. Goodbye, Maximilian. This whole thing, it's... it's... it's just a farce, right? Just... just my own brain working against me? You couldn't be more right. Hello, Max. What? Who? Why do you look like me? Are you me? Not really. I'm who you think you are. I am disciplined, controlled. I have no doubts, and I don't exist. Yet you have judged yourself against me your whole life. Why? Why do you berate yourself for not being me? What are you talking about? I can do that. We have the advantage! I see you're back with us. Feared we lost you there. Never seen anyone pass out yet stay upright before. I woke up. The illusions I built for myself just fell away. I'm no longer interpreting, I'm experiencing. Everything is perfect. In a way. Perhaps it's more accurate to say I was asking the wrong questions. I understand so much more now. I see it all. All there is to be experienced, to be lived. Of course there is pain and loss, but the suffering is caused by trying to control reality. Clinging to the way you want things to be, not enjoying the way they are.
I am content. I finally found what I was looking for, even though I was looking for the wrong thing. me. No big deal. Just shrugging off my injuries as I stroll away from another flaming impact crater. Oh. Tremendous work, friend. Here I was readying a daring maneuver and you've come and saved me the trouble. Symptoms detected. Elevated heart rate. Dilated pupils. Increased sweat production. Subject appears to be terrified. I'm not terrified, you bucket of bolts. That's victory sweat. The one and only. Uh, wait, who's asking? Wanda didn't send you, did she? I swear, land on Groundbreaker even a moment tardy, and that busybody's already been up your ass an hour. You tell her these Automechs are coming, and sending a hired stooge to rescue me from certain peril only furthers my delay. No offense. Meds, I'm guessing. Pirates love bits, and unlabeled meds are worth a bundle. Well, I've got some repairs to do. Thankfully, I'm as skilled a mechanic as I am a violence resolution expert. Then, to the Groundbreaker. Better late than ever, I say. Unless you're very late, then you might consider defaulting and skipping station. Those fees will bankrupt you.
Crew members Ellie and Max are engaged in a heated discussion in the kitchen. Hey, Max. Yes? You... Captain, I've been thinking. Something about this Harlow guy isn't on the up and up. Felix would trust the Sentry Automic if you painted an anti-corporate slogan on it. The way Harlow was leaning on his revolutionary bona fides, not to mention his knowing Felix back in the day, something about it feels off. Good. That makes two of us. Here we go. I haven't set foot in here since... Well... I'm ready. Yeah. Right? Yeah.
Infestation! Infestation in place! Well, this is the spot. You know, I thought I'd be angry. I thought I'd storm in here in a rage and exterminate all these bugs and everything would be all right in the end. But I ain't. I'm mostly just empty. A little sad, maybe. The first night Hayes and I spent in here, we knew it was home. It's safe. It's got a nice chill to it. But mostly, it doesn't stink of sulfur. Monarch folks often joke about it. Not because of the smell or the grittiness it leaves in your throat. Not because of the headaches or the coughing. It's because there's no escaping it. It's life here, and there ain't anything you can do about it. But here, somehow the sulfur never made it. The nights we spent in here felt like vacations. So we started building. We hauled in steel. Hired sublight folk to help. That's how we met Anders and Opal. They stuck around after our contract was up. Opal liked camping. Anders liked chasing her tail. Four of us for a while, scraping together what bits we could to build our home. Then came Rebecca, a sawbones out of the Cascadia survivors, who took a kindness to Hayes. And Clara, her little sister. I'll admit I wasn't keen on taking her on at first. But for a teenager, she was surprisingly capable. She had a head for numbers, helped us trade hides for food and materials, negotiated contracts, turned out to be mighty useful. Clara, Hayes, Anders, Rebecca, Opal, and me. Six folks, one name, one family, Charon. Despite Monarch trying to kill us day in and day out, we managed to belong. Me too, Captain. But I'm starting to think that maybe I found another. Now let's get to shooting before I get all sentimental. Caution! I wish these were more auspicious circumstances, but at least we're all here. This bringing them together, burying them, this is the kind of thing Hayes would have done. That makes it stupid. By all accounts, we should have left well enough alone, but that also makes it right. Captain. 
Thank you. You mind if we rest a spell before we head out? I'd... I'd like to bury Opal and Clara proper before I lay everyone's medallions to rest.
it used to be, you can get the best wine on Monarch here. Dispensing body bags. Area assessment. Tough stains and resistant contaminants ahead. Captain, Felix and the Vicar are arguing again.
Lying in the dirt is unsanitary.
job assessment. It's a mess! Never had much of a sweet to it myself. Indulgences like Rizzo's were crap. Some crew members are causing a disturbance on the ship. Now, hold on. What happens if we hit the wall? Most likely, the bullet will ricochet. Hey, Cap. Something on your mind? We arrived at Phineas's orbital lab, Captain, and we are still in one piece. Shall I congratulate myself, or would you like to do the honors? You gotta teach me that. Possibly can. The more, 
the better. If you don't bring me enough chemicals, I might not be able to save the Hope's colonists. And then nothing will stop the board from destroying this colony. Ah, yes, the details. I'm not about to ask you to rampage through Byzantium trading bullets with the board's agents. We'll have to resort to subterfuge. Carmen Imagawa. She's my contact in Byzantium. Meet her at the docks. She'll have all the necessary intelligence you require. I'm giving you my old nav key to Byzantium. You'll need it to land in the Golden City. Remember, you're looking for dimethyl sulfoxide. Big green bubbling vessel with a warning label. I'll take as much as you can find. You can trust her if that's what you're asking. Imagawa is the finest special agent in Byzantium that money can buy. My money, anyway. Of course, of course. What's on your mind? Crew report. Yoga is drunk. Surprise! <laughs> 